Welcome to the overview of the master's program at Duke University. I am Chuan Hua Chen. I'm the director of master's studies at the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Material Science, or MAMS in short. Uh, here is my email if you need to contact me. Uh, our uh, goal today is to give you an overview of uh, Pratt and uh, Mechanical Engineering and material science in particular, so that uh, you will make informed decision on whether to apply to Duke or uh, whether to accept our offer. Duke University is the youngest university of the top 10 in the US. Uh, we are a very dynamic community with about equal number of undergrads and grads. We have 10 different schools, so Duke is a very comprehensive university. It, almost any discipline that, that you're interested in, you will be able to find a presence on our campus. Uh, this program is located in our uh, home at uh, Durham, North Carolina, but Duke also have a global presence uh, in, for example, in Duke Queensland in China. Uh, we also have students studying in all five different continents. The Pratt School of Engineering is the fastest rising school of the top 30 engineering uh, programs in the US. Uh, we have a relatively small faculty size. We have about 140 faculty in total, and that's often the size of a large engineering department alone. So when you look at different uh, rankings, keep that in mind. Some rankings uh, take into account uh, the overall faculty size. Uh, whenever we are ranked on a per faculty basis, Duke is consistently in the top 10 uh, or top 15. Uh, the Press School of Engineering has four different departments and also the engineering management and, uh, program. Uh, we are very small. Uh, engineering school, so this nurtured a, a interdisciplinary collaborative culture. Uh, in our department, we actually have the rare combination of mechanical engineering and material science in the same unit. Uh, both are well-regarded programs uh, in the country. We have outstanding faculty, uh, including two uh, members of the National Academy of Engineering and uh, one recent recipient of the Benjamin Franklin Medal. Uh, we have uh, in total 34 uh, faculty in the tenure track and then another six professors of the practice. Our department has rapidly expanded in both uh, the number of faculty, number of students, and also our research expenditure. They all uh, doubled in the past 10 years or so. Uh, we're very proud of our students' accomplishments. Uh, if you join us, you will be among one of the 160 graduate students or so. Uh, we have produced many prestigious scholars in the country, and uh, our engineering students uh, graduated with a, with a starting salary that ranks among top 10 of all universities in the U.S. Uh, with that introduction, I have now, uh, now like to focus on our curriculum. Uh, so, the most important thing uh, in a master's education is that we want to make sure you have enough breadths and depths. Uh, the depths is ensured by a specialty that's defined with five core courses. Right? One of these five courses will be a graduate level mathematics course. The other four courses come out of usually the three primary specialties at MEMS. Those are dynamics and controls, fluids and thermodynamics, and materials and mechanics. Some students naturally have interdisciplinary interest. Uh, now, th there are a number of options that's available. Our curriculum is flexible to accommodate different interests. Uh, uh, one option is to uh, join the interdisciplinary programs. So, for example, our department has a joint program with civil engineering and computational mechanics. We have uh, jointly with many other departments at Duke uh, a materials science and engineering program. 
And then we also have a joint program is electroengineering on robotics. Uh, occasionally, a student say, well, none of these define my, my, my interest. Uh, in those cases, we will work with a student individually to, uh, to uh, develop a curriculum that's rigorous and flexible enough for that particular student. So, for example, I've worked with students in, in the past who, who were interested in, in combining uh, nanomechanics and biochemistry, and, and we ended up uh, uh, designing a curriculum just for that particular student. So, so this, remember that we, we have a rigorous requirement at the same time, we want to make the curriculum uh, flexible enough to suit your, your individualized needs. If you uh, have any questions, just feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, our program has both MS and an MEng degree, so Master of Engineering and Master of Science. Uh, they each require 30 credits of coursework. At Duke, that means 10 graduate courses. Uh, and then uh, MEng and MS is different mainly uh, by uh, the fact that one requires industrial preparation, the other requires research. So let's go through the MEng requirement first. In this chart, what you see is so the horizontal rows, those were different requirements, right? Industrial preparation, which includes two business courses, and then an internship. Uh, the internship is a course, but it doesn't carry any, any credit. Uh, then we have a specialty requirement. Those are five core courses, including a math. And then we have three elective courses. Now, when you read this map vertically, what you see is, so these are different semesters, right? Usually students join in the fourth semester. After two semesters of, of courses, they would do an internship in the summer between the first and second year. And then they would graduate in the following fall, if, if they have studied in fall. Uh, the students have an option of, of uh, staying on for fourth semester if they take a course that's related to the curriculum. Uh, remember, uh, we'll come back to the tuition structure later, but the fourth semester can be a lot cheaper in terms of tuition. Uh, <clears throat> one other thing to, uh, that I should note here is each of these gray box means a course. So, so in this case, this particular uh, student would have taken three courses in the fall, four courses in the spring, and then three courses in the fall again to satisfy the 10 degree requirement, uh, 10 course requirement. For MS degree, uh, the 30 degree, uh, 30 credits requirement is still the same. Uh, the main difference, as I said, is we now require research, right? That's the top uh, row, the red row. Uh, the uh, specialty and elective course requirement is the same. Now, unlike MNG, uh, most MS students, even though they finish their course requirements in three semesters, they choose to stay on for fourth semester uh, because uh, they want to, to have more time to do their MS research project. And now, if you have finished your course requirement, this last semester can be just a one unit uh, continuation course. And so that, that means you're basically paying about one ninth of uh, regular uh, tuition of, of, of the previous semesters. So as I said, uh, the, the degree requirements are very similar. The only uh, the major difference is uh, the internship in MNG program versus the research requirement in the MS program. Uh, otherwise, uh, the we are uh, the, our MS and MNG students actually are educated together mostly. And uh, we encourage them uh, to talk to each other. Sometimes we have MS students taking the business courses. We have MN students uh, taking with uh, doing independent studies, doing research projects uh, with our faculty. Uh, and, and those we we encourage uh, at these uh, uh, reaching out to different programs all the time. Uh, the master's tuition structure is worth clarifying again. As I said earlier, both MS and MNG degrees can be finished in three semesters, although uh, 
statistically, most MN students uh, finishing three semesters, most MS students choose to stay on for four semester. Uh, now, our tuition is structured such that your first three semesters are flat rate, right? So no matter how many courses you are taking, as long as it's full time, larger than than, than three courses, uh, three uh, or and then you pay exactly the same tuition. But in the fourth semester, it, you are charged per credit. Right? So for MS students, that often means you only need to pay one credit uh, uh, to, to continue to do a research project. That's, that tuition is, is one minus of, of your regular tuition. And then students if, also has the option of staying on for fourth semester. Uh, in, in that case, the student needs to take a degree related course and they would pay a three credit uh, uh, tuition. Uh, I will be happy to explain uh, our curriculum to you uh, in a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, later on, I'll also introduce the Q&A session uh, to you uh, where you can ask me questions. Uh, now, the other thing that I want to explain to all of you is uh, our students uh, get very good jobs and, and for the some students go on to prestigious PhD uh, programs, and and this is really the most important thing for any educational program. It's it's do our students uh, get good placement after uh, the education. If you look at uh, the companies that our students uh, join, the, the, those include very large prestigious companies like Applied Materials, Capital One, Honeywell. Uh, now, we do have a large percentage of our Master of Science students and some Master of Engineering students enter into the PhD program. Uh, some of them stay on at Duke. Some go to other universities like Rice or University of South Hampton. Uh, in 2017, the average starting salary of MAMS master's graduate are over uh, $80,000. Uh, this is a website where you can find where our students are placed over the years, and you can sort them by uh, discipline, by departments, by degree programs, by years. The, uh, so this gives you a sense of where our students are going. Uh, when If you join us, uh, this also becomes a handy tool when, you, when it comes time for job search, you would be able to see which companies are open to hire to graduates and, and where you can find alumni support. Now, I want to uh, summarize this presentation by saying, uh, answering why uh, Duke MAMS, why choose us? I, I think the MAMS program uh, that, that at Duke offers a unique combination of opportunities that, that only Duke can offer. Uh, and, and so I've, I've uh, expand on that with three bullet points. First, we have world-class research that and, and that research is immediately translated into project-based learning in, in, in graduate courses and, and in faculty-guided research. We have uh, interdisciplinary training in engineering and science. As I said, uh, our department is one of a handful in the U.S. that combines mechanical engineering and material science in the same department. Uh, our department is also instrumental in, in starting the engineering management program within Pratt. Uh, that, that's a very prestigious program uh, in, in the country now. Uh, finally, as I explained earlier, we have a very flexible curriculum uh, that is rigorous at the same time. Uh, so we want to make sure our students have both breadths and depths. Uh, and one way to ensure that is we require our MS students to complete a research project and they have to defend it to, 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 to graduate. And we also require the ENG students to do an internship so that they're ready by the time they graduate. Uh, for further information, you can contact me. Uh, I have my email earlier uh, in, uh, in the slides. You can uh, also contact uh, Brandy Oldham. Uh, she's the master's program coordinator in our department. 
uh, the uh, Pratt admissions team will also be supporting you. Uh, their contact information is uh, included on the slide as well. Uh, later on, we will have live Q&A session. You can visit our admitted student web page to register and submit your questions. The website is over there. Thank you for your, for your attention and I hope you choose to apply and uh, join Duke.